Hello everyone, welcome to Passion Talk, an initiative by Times Passion Trails. It is an exclusively curated series of masterclasses where experts talk about their art, the inspiration, the stories and their passion behind it. Our experts have specially crafted the subject for their masterclasses, sharing unique pearls of wisdom only they bring to the world. Get ready to discover flavors of traditional cuisines and their origins, unlock the secrets of Sufi music and understand why it touches your soul the way it does. Understand the art of mixology, get to know how cooking is nothing short of creating a sensory masterpiece and let a music maestro reveal the mysteries of poetry and music. Get ready to be inspired. Our masterclass today is Modern Indian Cuisine with Manish Mehrotra. Corporate Chef, Indian Accent, New Delhi, London, New York. Chef Manish Mehrotra designed the path-breaking menu of Indian accent that offers an inventive approach to Indian cuisine. He reinterprets nostalgic Indian dishes with an openness towards global technique and influences. Having started his career in Mumbai, he joined Old World Hospitality in 2000. He floored the guests at Oriental Octopus with his culinary skills and charm. He has since spent about 18 years with Old World Hospitality, opening several restaurants while traveling the world. Manish is passionate about his craft. His knowledge of ingredients and their origins is immense. He is an inspiration to aspiring young chefs today. He lives in New Delhi with his wife and daughter. Manish enjoys watching movies, cricket matches and cooking for his daughter Ada, who is a foodie and loves prawns. Manish is an enthusiastic reader and has a collection of more than 1200 cookbooks from around the globe. Winner of Traveler's Choice Award, Critics Award, regular winner of prestigious Times Food and Nightlife Awards and his restaurant being regularly awarded as among the top 100 places in the world to dine at. Manish is easily among the most exciting modern Indian chefs in the world today. Welcome to the show, Manish. Thank you so much. Um, really excited uh, on being on this Times Passion Trail. And what a fantastic initiative and during these times, I would say. And I think Times of India is famous for taking all these different kinds of innovative initiative uh, in food and beverage. And they are all one of the biggest awards of India, Times Food Award. And thank you so much. Glad to have you, Manish. So take us on this trail of modern Indian cuisine uh, from the first dish you created to being the modern Indian maestro you are today. Take us on a short trail. I don't know how to define modern Indian food. I think what we used to eat during the times of Chandragupta or Chanakya and Ashok, um, it is always on a progressive path. And... Um, after now, after so many years, almost 2,000 years after that, we are doing something which is now of a global Indian food for me. It's not only Indian food, it is global Indian food because the world has become a smaller place now. And it's a global village. And the food is not only for Indians, it is for the world population. And that is what I can say is a modern Indian food where Indian food is done in such a way that each and every person from a different part of the globe can identify to it, can relate to it and not be scared of eating it. The way Italian food is there, French food is there, or the Chinese okay. or the Japanese food is now a global cuisine. That is what now Indian cuisine have become a global Indian cuisine, not only because of its chicken tikka masala, but because of its regional food, regional offering, offerings, food from South India, food from Kashmir, food from Gujarat, food from Bengal, Northeast. We have so much to offer. Only thing is we have to offer it in such a way that uh, everybody is, uh, can relate to it and it is accessible to everyone. And that is what I feel is modern Indian food. And uh, Manish, take us through this journey where you say that we are able to offer regional food today and people are able to relate to it. 
Uh, take us through this journey. How did uh, your Naan become famous? How did you introduce uh, concepts like Dollar Ki Chart and made it a global favorite? Uh, take us through that journey. Um, um, I started my career from um, IHA Mumbai in 1993 to 1996. I was in IHA Mumbai. Then I joined Taj uh, President Hotel in Mumbai, worked in the, one of the legendary restaurants of India called Thai Pavilion under Chef Ananda Solomon and Johnson Chef. And there I've learned, I was always a pan-Asian chef specialized in Thai cuisine. Then I left Bombay and joined uh, Old World Hospitality almost 19 and a half years back in, in Delhi uh, at India Habitat Center. And with this company, I started growing. I went outside. I had a lot of uh, training tours all over the world. And uh, I was working in London, handling our restaurants in London at that point of time. And then 2009, we bought this, uh, we, we, taken over this property called the Manor Hotel in French Colony in Delhi, which was absolutely unknown to people. And there I started a restaurant called Indian Accent. And there I would say, um, I wanted to cook Indian food the way I want to cook it. The Indian food, which I think can be easily relatable Indian food, which is more comforting for international people also. It's not about reducing the masala or the chilies. It's about that Indian food is not about the big bowl of curry. And we are not only the curry nation. We have so many things to offer. Only thing is you need to tweak down the things a little bit. You have to put a little bit more um, thought in the way your beautiful dish is presented without, without compromising on authenticity, taste or flavor uh, or temperature or anything. Only thing is it's more presentable. Combinations are unique. Whatever combination I do is unique. Um, all these dishes, I want ingredients to talk. People should feel Every single ingredient should speak for itself in the dish. And we, we were doing all these things in Indian cuisine, but somewhere I make it slightly more refined and some unique combinations, some international dishes or international combination like cheese and bread uh, goes very well. That is why my blue cheese naan is one of our signature dishes. And uh, I personally... When I tasted blue cheese first time in my life, I said, how the hell anybody can eat this thing? It is so bad. But I developed the taste for it. And then I started loving it. And that is what happened now. One of our signature dishes, the moment you enter an Indian accent is uh, blue cheese naan. And people love it. Um, so slowly, slowly, all these things started coming into the menu. When I when I saw my I see my first menu, and now see my present menu, there is a vast difference, because uh, in last ten years of Indian accent, I have also evolved. I have learned a lot. My team has evolved. Um, we are now much. I have more clarity about my country, my regional cuisine and which I want to showcase in a different, different menus of Indian accent. And that is what uh, I do at Indian accent. And then we started- Our Manish, first menu and the menu today, a lot has changed. Even the global Indian cuisine has evolved. Our regional influences have come over. Take us through that journey. Uh, highlight some of the dishes that were there on the first menu uh, for that was modern Indian then, and to what we have, uh, what where we are right now. In the first menu, I think there were very basic combination of dishes and uh, use of technique. But now we have learned a lot. We have more elaborate menus, more elaborate and intricate combinations. Use of technology is more. Like like simple example of Dalat Ki Chaat. Like everybody now talk about Dalat Ki Chaat or a Malay or a Nimish or Makkan Malay all over the world. But... Um, I think a few years back, nobody knew what Dalat Ki Chaat was. And um, 
now I, I feel really happy when I see a Michelin New York site website, they have Dalit Ki Chat or Makkan Malai, um, a video of making that thing on their website. And Michelin New York website is a big thing. So it really makes me happy. All this thing, this recreation of regional Indian cuisine as a sensory experience, this also needs immense knowledge of the cuisine first to begin with. I mean, it can't just be a gimmick where you pick two ingredients, mix and match, uh, add fumes to it, and then you think that, okay, wow, wow, I've created a global Indian, modern Indian dish, so to say. Absolutely. See, for doing anything, anything with your cooking, innovation only comes when you know the basic of uh, uh, cooking. For anything, anything you have to innovate, if you want to write a new software, you have to have a basic knowledge of uh, computers. So same way, you have to have a basic knowledge of cooking, and then you have to do lots of research. So there are certain rules I follow in my research also when I try to innovate a dish or try to create a dish <clears throat> that uh, no two different cuisines of India will be in one dish. It cannot, you cannot make a um, Gustava in, in, in Chetinard style. You can't do that. So you keep the dishes to certain region, stick to that region, and there is always a circle. You have to close the circle that uh, when you create a dish, there, are, there should be a story behind it, whatever unique combination you have done, there has to be a reason behind that combination. Why you did that? Why blue cheese in a naan? Because blue cheese and bread is a classic combination. That is why blue cheese goes inside the bread where it is the pungent flavor of blue cheese is balanced out with a plain naan flavor and you drizzle a little bit of a honey on top, mm -hmm. which gives a sweetness, so it completes the circle. So this is how I, I try to uh, plan all my dishes, that it should not lose the identity of India. Because at heart, all your dishes has okay. to be Indian. Dil se Indian hona sabse zada zaruri hai. And suddenly, main koi dish the traditional Indian dish hai, usko ek dami alag kar du, aur usko rogan josh bolna shuru kar du, to it doesn't work like that. If I am calling something a rogan josh, it has to give the feel of rogan josh to a person. Whether a look wise, whether when you put it in your mouth, the flavor wise, it has to remind you People do a lot of now deconstructed things and some it's deconstruction means you are taking the different steps of that dish and segregating it. But when you eat it together, you get the feel of that particular dish, whether it's a deconstructed samosa or a deconstructed vada pao, whatever you want to do. But the thing is, when you eat it, it should remind you of that dish. With your close eyes, if you eat, you feel that you are eating that samosa. So that is very, very important when you know the basic of cooking. And definitely you have to do a lot of research. You have to find out the history of that dish, where it originated, how it got originated. And once you start researching, you will be fascinated that each and every dish in India has a story and a history behind it which is fantastic. And people really don't know about that. Dosa is such Lovely. a fantastic thing. I think dosa is one of the Lovely. best pancake in the world. So uh, tell us uh, some of the interesting stories around uh, some of your most popular dishes, like top five dishes of yours, or tell us interesting stories around it, such as you told about dosa being the best pancake in the world. Oh, there, there, are, there are many. 
uh, once we started doing, um, everybody now talks about all over the world about smoking their dishes and this and that. You won't believe that Puri Temple have got smoke charts from centuries. In all these Marwari homes, if you go there, you will be surprised that they have smoked papad in, in, their, in their home. Like Maharaj and all, they smoke papad with ghee and long, um, and it served as a, as a snack or during the meal, they eat that papad and all. So it's, it's amazing. Dolat ki chaat is what? It's a aerated milk. Everybody talks about foams and, uh, and airs and all these things. Dolat ki chaat malayo is an air. It's, it's, it's a foam. It's an aerated milk, which uh, I think 150 years back, a guy must be putting back of his cycle and selling it in Old Delhi and the Chandni Chowk on a horse cart or something like that. So there are so many stories, so much of history behind each and every dish of India, I would say. And uh, this is what uh, we try to do, that do research, do that dish, tell the story and make it globally famous. And uh, Manish, uh, you're doing a fantastic job of it. But when you started and uh, you started taking these Indian dishes to the world, to New York, to London, uh, to all these places and of course showcasing them in Indian because a lot of your uh, guests were expats. Uh, what was the perception battle you were fighting related to Indian food? For them it was curry bowls, curry houses and here you were saying uh, you were dishing out global Indian cuisine to speak of. Um, when we started Indian accent, um, now a lot of expat is comes to Indian accent because Indian accent they know, they read about Indian accent in Delhi and all. So they come to Indian accent. But the thing is, when we started, our first guests were local Delhi people, Indians. And in the beginning, our people used to walk okay. out of the uh, restaurant. Oh, humko to laga ke this was a uh, Indian restaurant. Aapke paas to ye kuch cheeze hi nahi hai Indian ki. Ame sir, Indian hi khana hai. No, 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 no. We were looking for more traditional mm -hmm. things and all. So I had to stay in the restaurant and explain, sir. Sir, you eat. If you don't like it, meal is on me. It will be complimentary. But the thing is, then slowly, slowly, I try, try to explain people what exactly I'm trying to do. And uh, after 10 years, here we are. And mm -hmm. extract didn't come just like that. I am very, very fortunate and grateful to my Indian mm -hmm. guests. Who used to get their expat, uh, expat friends and guests to Indian action to showcase that my Indian uh, Indian khana is not only about okay. uh, curry bowls and anything. Now you see, this is also Indian food. So we are grateful to our Indians who made mm -hmm. Indian accent more popular amongst their expat friends and businesses and everything. So that is how now Indian accent has become what Indian accent is. Okay, and uh, Manish, uh, did you have the confidence when you were going ahead and uh, coming up with this kind of uh, food preparation? Did you really think or was something that you had firm belief in and you said, let's see how it goes? Whenever, whenever I, I try to uh, create a dish or everything, I still remember what I learned when I was with Chef Ananda and all, that he always used to say, is ka paisa dega to restaurant mein baith ke. Will you pay for these things yourself and sit and eat in the restaurant? That is the first question every chef has to ask himself. That uh, will you pay the amount of money to eat that particular dish what you are creating in, in the restaurant? The answer should be yes. If you, if you are confident on that dish that yes, I am making it because I love to eat this. Then a big battle is won. So you have to be confident. You have to believe in what you are doing. And uh, then I think that thing will be successful. Okay. And uh, Manish, uh, believing and being successful is one thing. Uh, but also you rightly said that, you know, terminologies that keep cropping and 
you having to constantly experiment with that you heard sous vide some day you heard modern uh, cooking some day you heard deconstruction the other day you heard uh, molecular uh, gastronomy uh, did those emerging terms or trends ever bother you with what you were doing or did you ever use like did you think that one should move away from consistent quality cooking and uh, look for gimmicks like those um i i see gimmick is totally different sous vide or or all these things are uh, uh, using a siphon or a thermomix and all these things are a tool to improve the dish maybe the texture of the dish maybe the color of the dish maybe the appearance okay. of the dish without the moment these techniques start becoming the hero of the dish then it's a problem so molecular gastronomy is not a problem it's a fantastic innovation in the world but sometimes if that only becomes the hero of the dish and there is no flavor there is no is only a surprise factor so in a smaller things it works but the thing is if the entire meal is about liquid nitrogen and dry ice and foams and powders and all then it's 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 a it's a movie you don't want to repeat it's a theater you don't want to repeat but if you use all these things as as a side heroes to enhance the dish but the main hero protagonist of the dish is about flavors about the textures about the colors then that dish is successful so i always we use sous vide we use thermomix we use all water bath and all these things in our kitchen but i never um showcase that oh this is the only thing i do no my thing is these are the things which helps me to create even flavorful dishes so i okay. use them as a tool rather than as a gimmick and money in your uh, journey across the country which cuisines have been really fascinating which have really uh, intrigued you uh, attracted you really fascinated you as a chef um, there there are there are so many so see khana food of every region every country is very very good definitely some flavors are unique some flavors you have to develop because you have not exposed to those kind of a flavors mm -hmm. um suddenly like like china people don't eat that much of sweet so that is what i always say ki mm -hmm. eating a gulab jamun for a normal chinese guy is a very difficult thing because it's too sweet for him aur hamare yahan agar meethe mein meetha na ho to hum bolte hain are yaar meetha mein meetha hi nahi hai ye to and so we need jalebi or gulab jamun kind of a meetha yeah. ab suddenly uh, hum if we eat blue cheese oh my god what is this how can somebody eat it same way if you give a french guy a um, mm -hmm. asafetida hing to usko bhi bada ajeeb sa lagega ki ye kya cheez hai hing mm -hmm. jabki hing hamari cuisine mein itni zyada istemal hoti hai lekin kisi foreigner ke liye wo badi ajab ajeeb si cheez hogi उसको नहीं समझ जैसे हम रिएक्ट करेंगे ब्लू चीज के लिए वो हिंग को देख के वैसे रिएक्ट करेगा सो क्विजीन वाइज ऑल द क्विजीन हैव बेस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड चाइनीज क्विजीन इज सो वास्ट सो रीजनल वी डोंट नो अबाउट इट जापानीज फूड इज सो रिफाइंड एंड सो प्रिसाइज दैट एवरीबडी शुड लर्न फ्रॉम देम कि एक सब्जी का कट एक मीट का कट भी डिश की पूरी कॉम्पोजिशन चेंज कर सकता है कभी कभी होता है जैसे हम आ, कहीं पुरानी दिल्ली या कहीं पे जाते हैं और एक बहुत ही टेस्टी निहारी खाते हैं वी ईट अ फैंटास्टिक क्वालिटी ऑफ निहारी बट उसके अंदर जो मीट के पीसेस होते हैं वो अच्छे नहीं होते हैं फैट होता है या बोन ज्यादा होती है या मीट के कट्स बराबर नहीं होते हैं तो उस निहारी का मजा खराब हो जाता है सो दिस इज वॉट आई ट्राई टू डू that we have so many fantastic things but come sometimes hamare purane logo ne cost maintain karne ke liye ke aam janta ke liye wo cost maintain rahe to thodi thodi unhone 
क्वालिटी में नहीं लेकिन इंग्रेडिएंट्स की क्वालिटी में थोड़ी सी कमी करने की वजह से वो उतना मजा नहीं देती है तो दैट इज व्हाट आई वांट टू से वी हैव फैंटास्टिक थिंग व्हाई कैन वी डू फैंटास्टिक इंग्रेडिएंट्स टू मेक दोस सो जापानीज वे मेक्सिकन व्हेन यू गो टू मेक्सिको यू लर्न सो मच सो मेनी सिमिलैरिटीज इन आवर क्विजीन एंड मेक्सिकन इंग्रेडिएंट्स बट स्टिल द क्विजीन इज सो डिफरेंट इटालियन इज सो फेमस बट द different regions of italy have a different 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 cuisine sicily is totally different from puglia the way kashmir is totally different from kerala so all over the world food you can learn mm-hmm. and this is one journey of eating and learning you cannot finish in one lifetime you cannot learn cuisines in one lifetime you cannot finish eating everything in the world in one lifetime Absolutely, and uh, Manish, of all your journeys that you've taken off late, uh, what is the mindset towards Indian cuisine now? Is it evolving? Are people able to relate to your cooking as Indian food, or they are talking about they're still are uh, talking of uh, tikkas and butter masalas and curry as uh, Indian cuisine? I'm very happy to say that the mindset of people is now changing. it has started from cities like london new york and all but now it is changing people um i gave you the example of this mexican magazine um or uh, or different different magazine all over the world a japanese magazine or a korean magazine things are changing 10 years back nobody knew what what uh, dosa was in america but now everybody knows what dosa is people know about south indian food earlier it was just north indian food mughlai north indian um, northwest frontier food only about tandoor or naan and all now people know what puri is people know what bhatura is they know what chole is so you feel really happy about that that now people thinking is changing and now they are understanding that indian food is not about chili is only it is about the different flavor of spices it is the spices and every spice and the spice blend plays different role lal mirchi kashmir mein bhi istemal hoti hai lal mirchi andhra mein bhi istemal hoti hai lal mirchi rajasthan mein bhi istemal hoti hai alag alag kisam ki lal mirchiyan hoti hain but wo lal mirch aur haldi har jagah ki cheeze alag alag bana dete hain kaise hota hai ye it's a different technique different uh, combinations of spices people use in different regions of india which makes our food so unique and still so different from each other yeah yeah i, I was saying uh, which which are the places which young chefs uh, uh, establishments you've noticed who are doing all this to break this perception uh, bring forth the uh, indian food in it's true light i mean they're presenting it the variety that we have to offer what have you noticed what are some of the things that you observed around the world there there are there are many chefs it 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 stall started um um with uh, first thing i would say chef sanjeev kapoor he 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 cooks on television he he is the one who 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 changes changed the word cook to chef it was always khansama or cook before sanjeev kapoor and chefs a respected job after sanjeev kapoor so first thing all of us all the chefs in india should pay tell be grateful to him that he is the one who changed the word cook to chef after that chef late chef floyd cardos or chef hemant mathur they are the ones who who have taken indian food in a different way uh jo chicken tikka masala se hat kar tha in america chef vinit bhatia chef atul kochar um they are the ones um, chef vivek singh all these people they are the one who changed the curry house culture in london now chef srijit or gagan if you see gagan's food it's a totally different way of looking at indian cuisine which is fantastic even i cannot look towards indian food in uh, the way he looks 
towards Indian food. And that is another version of Indian food, which uh, he, he does in his restaurant, which is super fantastic. And he is now one of the best known Indian chefs in the world. So Srijit Gopinathan, who is doing fantastic food with the Californian ingredients, Indian food in San Francisco, or there are restaurants like Nodad, uh, Nadodi uh, in Malaysia, or, or so many other restaurants all over the world. And they are doing fantastic job of changing people's perception about Indian food outside India. And then you go, chefs in India, I would say chefs in India are very, very talented, a lot of knowledge, a lot of innovation. Thoda se hame farak pad jata hai, hamari supply chain itni strong nahi hai India mein, ke hum log kabhi ingredients ke hamare ko kami ho jati hai. Like in Delhi, sometimes you really struggle for a very good quality seafood. Okay. In Bombay, you sometimes really struggle for a very okay. good quality things from North India. Or South, you really struggle for an ingredient from Northeast. Mm -hmm. A good quality bamboo shoot, a good quality fresh gujjalukia and all these things, you really struggle. In India, there are so many chefs who are doing Indian food, regional Indian food in a different, different way. Whether it is Hussein from O Pedro or, or um, Sora Budinia from Masala Library, or Himanshu Saini is doing a fantastic job in Dubai, uh, taking Indian food in a different direction. Or mm -hmm. other chefs like Chef Naren Pimaya, or uh, Manu Chandra, or um, mm -hmm. Chef Zach, or Gresham Fernandez. All these people are doing fantastic job promoting. In Manu Chandra uses fantastic Indian ingredients in his restaurant in Toast and Tonic in Bangalore which creating unique dishes from Indian ingredients with Indian cheeses. Zach is doing fantastic regional food in his own form in, in Bombay Canteen. So there are so many chefs who are doing fantastic job in India. And uh, um, now the revolution of using local food to create even an Italian dish or a Mexican dish. There are so many young chefs who are, who are doing fantastic jobs, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, rightly pointed out, I mean, some of these young chefs who are presenting international dishes using Indian, Indian ingredients, uh, putting Indian ingredients on a global map, that is a really welcome change uh, that one has noticed. Uh, Manish, also, uh, in, in your experience globally, what, what's happening in the food world? What, what have you noticed? What have you observed uh, in general? In general, see, all all world is becoming smaller place. Now chefs are interchanging ingredients from different parts of the world. Now every every good restaurant, um, maybe a three star Michelin restaurant in France will have a small bowl of ramen in their tasting menu, but that's certain chefs' interpretation of ramen uh, on their menu. So it's a French restaurant, but doing a ramen in their own interpretation. Uh, some Like Indian accent, we do tacos in our own interpretation with the jackfruit, with the fulka. So world is becoming smaller. Chefs are now traveling more, getting inspiration from different parts of the world. And the way Gagan uh, incorporate a lot of Japanese techniques and uh, Japanese style of dishes in his Indian menu. So chefs are becoming more uh, inspired by different regions, their travels, their tasting of different cuisine, and incorporating them into their own menus, which is fantastic. And uh, that is the way forward for all the cuisines to grow. And uh, while researching your own own um, own own dishes, your own regions, your own own cuisines, and in that way, I would say, um, ten years back, there were food programs on a television which were teaching the rajma ke kebab kaise banate hain, ya paneer ke pakode kaise banate hain. Now you see the television chefs like Ranbir Barar or Kunal Kapoor 
are doing a research based program about pickles of india or 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 thalis of india or or mithais of india which is such a fantastic thing which is such a fantastic thing like mithais are so unexplored part of india because restaurants and mithai shops were always separate in india but now they are coming together places like khoya mithai and or bombay canteen have started their new mithai shop bombay mithai shop yeah. they are now taking the traditional indian mithais and adding innovation into it and doing a fantastic job so this is this is what i find a revolution this is the revolution and a uh, way forward for indian cuisine globally do you think uh, as you said that mithai seems to be the current flavor of everyone uh, where people are now really looking at traditional indian mithais and presenting it uh, as a global dessert yes it is it is it is at got a huge potential the only problem in our mithai and and the uh, namkeen business is it is bit of a labor intensive business so the moment it becomes a labor intensive business okay. labor intensive work it doesn't work that well internationally because the labor is the main cost in in your in your business but i am sure very soon the bit of a innovations when these things become popular the bit of a innovation and the machinery will come that it will become less labor intensive and i am i'm looking forward to it that uh, uh, some day we'll have a pista ki lodge along with a pista mac uh, pistachio macaroon from ladure in 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 france and you will have a petit pot which is pista ki lodge or badam ki lodge or a, or a chota uh, very flavored saffron uh, rasgulla as a petit pot then then a macaroon or a, or a noga or something like that oh lovely that sounds really good but manish uh, coming to your passion as chef and also thinking as a restaurant here uh, you thought of a dish and then uh, you think of the overall experience that you were going to be creating uh, take us through that journey as well because that is as important as your knowledge of cuisine and putting together our uh, various ingredients uh the overall experience take us through that journey uh the dish in your mind to the dish on the table uh, it it planning a dish is is a is a very different kind of a process at least in my restaurant is i i think of something and then i start working on how to how to present it and execute it and here my team comes into the picture because i can think of something i can uh, no but they are the ones who really have to execute it and in that way we do lot of trials we do dry grams on the paper how to present that dish um, um color combination of the plates and the color of the dish and what all different different components are in the that particular dish maybe in one dish there are different compon- components where one component comes from a cold section one component come from a tandoor section one component come from the curry section and then it comes on the plate so in that way my kitchen becomes a very democratic kitchen and my team really comes into the picture honestly speaking my tandoori guy a kami too on a on a tandoor can make 100 times faster rotis than me mm-hmm. because he is doing it every day he can make tandoori rotis 10 times faster than me but the thing is what to put in that kulcha that i try to get it and i tell the recipe okay this is the pumpkin and cheddar kulcha this is how pumpkin is made this is how the mixture is made and uh, this is how it is to be stuffed and then it goes in the tandoor and how it is to be presented so these are the things which i do and my team helps me to execute and in that way my kitchen is a very democratic kitchen um where i am open to ideas from the junior most employees of the kitchen uh, to the senior most chefs lovely and uh, any two three dishes that really caught your imagination that you like 
they've been constant in your on your menu you reworked and worked on them again and again but they've just caught your imagination and you really really love them there there seem like dolat ki chaat dolat ki chaat is on on indian accent menu is from last 6 7 years now okay. and uh, dolat ki chaat i was eating it from the childhood mm-hmm. because my family is from bihar a lot of relatives in up so you go to kanpur lucknow banaras and all these places coming to delhi you try this thing and wow how fantastic it is but it is only made in winters only sold in the morning time so now we these things were there because at that point of time when it was mm-hmm. invented there were no technology the refrigeration was not there proper refrigeration fridge freezers and all these things were not there so now we have all these technology why can't we do it now and this is a unique thing like um, um, one of the very very top most mm-hmm. chef from spain came to indian accent and uh, when he tried dolat ki chaat and he said mm-hmm. oh you have egg in that i said there's no egg in this no no not possible how can you do this without egg you have to have egg in this he said no there is no egg it's just aerated mm-hmm. milk no not possible at all so he was not ready to um agree that there is no egg in that dolat ki chaat but um, uh, i told him it's just the aerated milk and he loved it he loved it the correct combination of sweet saffron the rose petal crunch the almond and the soft foam he was he was surprised and he is a three michelin star chef known for using technology in his restaurant in spain so you do you really feel happy that you have dishes in your country absolutely and th- i mean that's exactly what you've done with indian food manish you really uh floored even the top culinary experts the food lovers with the kind of creations you presented over the years thank you so much manish for this fantastic culinary trail thank you so much thank you so much amir for inviting me thank you thank you all for watching this edition of passion talk Our series continues with many such amazing masterclasses lined up with each having as exciting and interesting a personality as Manish. Upa Manish, once again it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and going on this culinary passion trail with you.